Hi there, my name is Paul Jennings and I'm a writer and editor in the Health Information Center at Oregon Health Authority. And uh, today I am joined by Dr. Shimi Sharif uh, so that we can talk a little bit more about natural versus vaccine induced immunity. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks for having me, Paul. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, so Dr. Sharif, to get started, um, I wanted to ask if you could shed light on what the difference between natural and vaccine induced immunity is. So natural immunity is immunity that comes after getting COVID-19. So either getting infected or getting really sick from COVID-19. And vaccine induced immunity is immunity that you get before you get COVID and as a result of vaccination and in such a way that you don't have to get sick before you have antibodies to the virus. Is either form of natural or vaccine induced immunity better than the other? So for those of us who haven't been exposed to COVID-19, 100% it's better to get vaccine-induced immunity because the effects of getting COVID can be really devastating. Uh, people can have long-term effects like kidney disease, heart disease, uh, permanent lung damage as a result of COVID-19. So in all cases, it's preferable to get vaccinated before you or your family gets infected with COVID-19. And can you speak to how long either form of immunity lasts? So natural immunity can last up to eight months, according to a research NIH research brief. Um, but vaccine-induced immunity, we know very consistently can last up to nine months, if not longer. Uh, we're still in the process of getting some of the data, especially from the earliest trials, as, uh, dating as far back as June of 2020 for Pfizer and Moderna. So we're still trying to see what data we can get from those manufacturers regarding the, the actual full length of immunity. And if folks have had COVID-19, should they still get the vaccine? So our recommendation at this time is yes. So if you've had COVID-19, it's still our recommendation to get the vaccine, mainly for a few different reasons. One is we don't know how long the immunity lasts on an individual basis. And then the other reason is uh, we don't know how long the immunity lasts, even on a population level. So we've seen that some of the folks who've had COVID-19 can have immunity for up to eight months, but we don't know how, how many in terms of percentages. There's some data coming in from Denmark that shows that it could be a very large percentage, but it really does seem hard to predict who will and won't develop long-term immunity. And also in those folks with antibodies, we just don't know what that threshold is, at which point you're considered immune as opposed to just having an antibody response. And we don't know how much of an antibody response really confers true clinical immunity immunity and the fact that you won't get the disease if you were exposed again. Um, currently, however, our recommendation is if you've had COVID-19 within the last 90 days, you can be considered uh, fairly protected. And so if you do get re-exposed in the 90 days after your last COVID-19 test, you don't have to quarantine again, even if you're exposed. Okay. So despite all that information, we still see online that people are willing to rely on natural immunity to COVID-19 versus getting vaccinated. Can you explain the risk of people getting exposed to COVID-19 versus getting vaccinated against it? Certainly. So the risk of getting exposed to COVID-19 can be really great. Um, while we know a lot of people will develop mild infection, there's um, actually quite a significant number of people who develop either moderate symptoms, which can include actually severe shortness of breath, or really severe disease needing to be hospitalized or go to the ICU. Um, so the risk of getting infected with COVID-19 in a way to develop antibodies to the virus is really not a, a good sort of approach to developing this immunity just because of just the tremendous risk both for, you know, potentially death as well as ongoing disability as a result of that illness. Um, vaccination gives you that opportunity to, you know, develop some level of immunity to the virus so that if you were to get exposed, that your illness will be a lot less than if you were unvaccinated. What are the chances of someone having serious complications from COVID-19 if they're unvaccinated? And what are the chances of them having serious complications if they're fully vaccinated? So currently, at least from the data that we have so far in the pandemic, is that about 15% of adults can actually develop really serious complications. Um, the actual hospitalization rate for different states in the US and different localities really vary. Um, because like I said, it can be really hard to predict on the individual level if you're going to need a hospital stay or not, or end up in the ICU as a result of COVID-19. But the chances are much, much greater if you're unvaccinated compared to if you've already received uh, both doses of a two-dose series of one or one dose of a Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, and what we do know from the trials is that those vaccine efficacy numbers really tells you how much of a how much 
reduced of a risk that you are at after vaccination. So is that every encounter that you have to a potentially COVID positive individual, you could have anywhere from 66 to 95% less of a risk on that encounter. And then really like in terms of individual risk, it's really hard to predict on the individual level because it really depends on so many other things like exposure, um, where you work and all of your other social circumstances that put you at risk and also personal risk factors. You know, what are your chances of um, having the full efficacy that's noticed in the trials? Uh, because some folks who are on certain medications could have uh, a little bit reduced efficacy from the vaccines than those who don't. Uh, for example, if they're on steroids or other immunocompromising conditions or medications. So I've seen a couple articles circulating that say that somebody's had COVID-19 and they're experiencing experiencing long haul symptoms that once they've become fully vaccinated, some of those symptoms have cleared up. Do you have anything that you can comment on that subject? Yeah, I've seen some of those anecdotal reports also, but I don't think we're at a time right now, at least where we have a lot of data to support that there's truly a causal mechanism to indicate like some people who are vaccinated do, you know, experience reduction of their long COVID symptoms um, because there's potentially uh, you know, that coincidence between, you know, what they would have naturally noticed in the span of their illness versus something that's truly vaccine induced. But I think there are researchers looking into this topic right now. Are there any other benefits to completing a vaccine? There, there's a few. So on the medical side, it's definitely preferable to get vaccinated, especially at a time like this when we're trying, we're starting to see the emergence of variants. And the reason is that the vaccines while we know that you know some of the variants do pose a risk for vaccine effectiveness compared to others, we do know that the vaccines are actually fully efficacious against the UK variant. Uh, the UK variant uh, continues to be the you know the most common circulating variant here in the United States, so that's the B117 variant. Um, and we do know that the vaccines still work, well, probably to a slightly reduced efficacy against the South Africa and the Brazil variants, uh, which are also common here in Oregon. Um, in terms of other benefits to getting vaccinated, the CDC recently updated their guidance for fully vaccinated individuals to allow them to, you know, congregate and go into social settings, both indoor and outdoors without a mask on. Um, in actuality, like how this is being operationalized in Oregon, you know, there might be businesses that might require, um, you know, having to see some kind of documentation of vaccination to allow people to do that freely. But it really is a testament to how well the vaccines work because the risk is so much lower if you're you have no symptoms of COVID and you've been fully vaccinated, the chances are, even if you've been infected and you don't know it, the chances are really low that you could ever pass it on to somebody else. And, you know, our social distancing and our masking guidance is sort of in place, at least for people um, who do have, you know, potential risk of exposure and infection after vaccination as a result of personal risk factors. But we do know on a population wide level for most folks that the vaccines work really well. So are there any other messages you would give to somebody who's still on the fence about getting vaccinated? Um, certainly. So the main point is that the vaccines are safe. We have at least nine, if not more months of data on most of these vaccines. We have several countries that have used multiple mRNA vaccines as well as adenovirus vector vaccines, such as the Johnson & Johnson already. Um, and then the other thing is just the variants. Um, so if you really need to be protected against a variant strain of the virus, it really is in your best interest to get vaccinated because we know that natural infection has some immunity, but there's even less known about immunity against a different strain than the one you were exposed to. Um, and finally, you know, we're sort of at this great privilege in this country right now of having access to three very effective vaccines. And, you know, we see the virus continue to ravage different parts of the world, as well as different states here in the United States. Um, so I really urge everyone to just like take advantage of the unique privilege that we have right now and uh, get vaccinated. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Sharif.